Hey everybody and welcome to our Hidden Potential Online Bible Study. We are so excited you decided to join us. My name is Kendra and I'm the manager of Online Bible Studies and this is the author of Hidden Potential, Wendy yes. Pope. And Wendy, you have been a lifelong friend of the ministry. You've been here for been. a long time. Yes, and I have been. We have done your book, Wait and See, before. Right. And this and. is the second book that we have done. Right. And so we are so excited that you are here and we can't wait to learn from well, you. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. And so, Wendy, just to start us out, because I think uh -huh. it's very important yes. for all those who signed up, I would love to know why you wrote Hidden Potential, because when you wrote this book, not only did you write a message that God mm -hmm. laid on your heart, which a lot of authors do, but you had the OBSer, that's you who signed up for this right. study, in mind the whole time, and I, I would love for you to talk about that. Well, what I've noticed about the OBSers is they are women who want to intersect the Bible, mm -hmm. the Word of God, with everyday stuff stuff that they deal with, yeah. situations in life, just the needs that they have. And to go deep with that, but to touch that felt need. Yes. And this message just lend itself perfectly for the OBS audience. It really did. Fears, faults, failures, and frailties. Right. We and all doesn't experience have those, those. Right. Right. All everyone's uh, hand is raised. Exactly. Yes. All of them at one time, sometimes right. at you know different times. But yeah, that's why I was thinking this is a great, this will be a great book for the um, OBSers. And I love, I remember when you called Melissa and I, Melissa Taylor, the Senior Director of yes. Online Bible Studies, and you told us that you had the OBSer in mind mm -hmm. as you wrote this book. I, I did, mean, I it's of her. six chapters, right. which seems very doable. So it's one chapter per week, right. which is really nice, really unheard of with Online Bible exactly. Studies. And I wanted to do that because time is important. I'm a yes. respecter of time and... Um, I love boundaries, and I love the beginning and the end, and it just seems too much to complicate a couple chapters this week and a couple chapters that week, but this week we're only doing one, so I yes. said, let's just do six weeks, perfect, and let's just hit the Word of God and match it up with our needs. Oh, I love that, mm -hmm. and I love simplicity, so uh -huh. I, think we'll, I think everyone will really appreciate that, and something else that you have in your book that I wanted to make sure that we drew right. attention to was at the end of each chapter, you did, you did this in your other book, Wait and See as well, Yes. you give us time to respond, so there's Absolutely. two things that you walk us through, one, reflecting on what God can do, and you give different questions, right, to respond right. and reflect. Right. And then you give us revealing my potential, mm, and it's really where yeah. you get to unpack um, different things that you wrote in that chapter. And so, why did you add that to your book? I think that's very unique. well. I remember um, when uh, back in the day when I could go to Bible study at my church, which I don't really have the time to do that with all the ministry work that I do, carrying my Bible, my journal, <laughs> my, like this. my Bible study book. Oh, you see, you have a lot exactly. Of stuff. <laughs> and I thought, you know, how can we make this simple for women? Yeah. And so working with David C. Cook, we put everything together. We put the Bible study questions in there awesome. and the journal. And I love the journal uh, because it gives the reader the opportunity to give real-time action to what God is teaching them right in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then they don't have to go back later and try to find the spiral notebook that they used when they did Hidden Potential. Right, right. Everything is right in the book. How perfect. Again, simple. Yes. Simple. Simple. It's a theme I'm hearing, so that's wonderful. <laughs> so before we get into how these videos are going to look, I do want to call attention to something that you may be wondering mm -hmm. in your mind is we have all experienced the impact of the pandemic COVID-19, right. and we waited to film these videos specifically until we were able to meet in person because we knew mm -hmm. that just... Something was going to happen when Wendy and I both sat down and really had a conversation about this book and about Moses, who we're going to be studying together. And so we waited to film these videos. We actually went through a lot of rearranging of dates and places Different and time options, and technology. Yes. And so if you could see the film crew behind these cameras, you'll see masks on. You'll see them all sitting six feet apart. And so we just wanted to make sure that you guys knew we are being very safe and that social distancing is happening. But here is what we know. We are all entering a new normal at some point, and we're not totally sure what that's going to look like, but we do know it's a perfect time to find our potential because we have an opportunity to reset and restart and really come together, learn from Wendy, and then just really apply it to our lives when we do 
hit the ground running with a new normal. And so we know mm-hmm. distance does not t- deter what God is going to do mm-hmm. through Wendy's word, through God's word, and through these videos. Mm-hmm. And so we are really looking forward to studying right alongside you. Mm-hmm. So with that, Wendy, what we're going to do each one of these videos is we are going to hear from Wendy for a Mm -hmm. few minutes, something that God has laid on her heart. And you will notice in each chapter, there is a question that you discuss in the book, but you're going to take us a little further in these videos. And so, Miss Wendy, we are ready for question (laughs) one. We're ready for the first teaching. And so we cannot wait for you to talk about, let's get to what, do you know what chapter one question is? I do. It's right in front of me. You have the book. I know. Can God do anything with me and Wendy? Yes. What do you say to that? Can God do anything with me? He certainly can. Yes. You know, and what I have found in the answer to that question is he can do anything with anybody, Mm. but we have to cooperate with that work. There's the kicker. That's yeah. the kicker. <laughs> you know, the questions that we're going to answer, Kendra, are, are all yes. Mm-hmm. I'll just go ahead and give the there spoiler alert. There they are. They're like all that. yes. Every week, there's six yeses. But there's the caveat mm-hmm. of what are we going to, how are we going to cooperate with God's work in our life for Him to do anything? Yes. Um, and I remember writing the, the first blank page of a book is the most intimidating, almost mm-hmm. as much as the first page of the last chapter. It's like, how do I start, and then how do we end this book? Lord? Right, because you want to take the OBSer or the person through right, a exactly. journey, right? Exactly. So um, I have a unique way to write a book. Um, I don't write my books at home. I write my books away. Okay. Um, my family and I work together. I have grown to children, and they, they do live at home with us, but I make sure everybody is aware. There's a family calendar. <laughs> Mom wants to take this week to go away and write. Mm-hmm. And most of the time I write at the beach. Um, I live in North Carolina, and I go to, a, I just rent an Airbnb or a yeah. condo somewhere, and I sit with the Lord, and um, I go there, and I get all my food at the beginning of the week, and wow. we just sit, me and the Lord, and camp out. And I remember this particular chapter I started when a hurricane was coming through North Carolina. Perfect. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> um, and the air conditioning broke in that no. condo that weekend. So it's all kinds of interesting things happened. <laughs> but I remember saying, Lord, Lord, how, how do I start this book? Mm-hmm. I knew what the message of Moses was. I knew that the potential that Moses had was there at the beginning Regardless of what he did in his life, that potential was there. God saw it. Yeah. How do I translate this? Where do we start? And I was sitting on the couch watching the wind of Michael, Hurricane Michael, I believe it was. And I felt the Spirit just whisper to me, they can't know me. They can't believe me if they don't know me. Wow. Because one of the questions we ask is, okay, so God can do anything with me. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Right. He can Doubt. do for her. Yep. I can see him doing for her or for them, and that ministry is great, or that opportunity, maybe not even ministry. Maybe it's job-related. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's community, something they do in the community. But really, can they for me? And, Lord, how do we address that question? Mm-hmm. So I do that in Chapter 1, and that's where I want us to take a look at, um, in Chapter 1, two main themes I want to address today. Um, as far as answering that question and the idea of we can't believe a God that we don't know. That's good. We can't believe a God that we don't know. There's a lot of people that talk about God, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, praise God or God bless America or God bless this or we thank God. Right. um, And kind of use the name of God in a simple way, in a very vague way. Very familiar. Very, exactly. Very just as a matter of fact, but to really believe that God can do anything with me Mm -hmm. for that woman on the other side, anything that can God do anything with you, you have to know who God is. Yeah. So I want us to look at the idea of knowing who God is and believing who God is. And how do we know who God is? Well, there's two ways of knowing who God is. First, we have to know God through salvation. Mm. And keeping the idea, I can't believe a God, I can't believe someone I don't know, and I can't believe God if I don't know who God is, we have to have our salvation secured, yeah. Kendra. Um, you know, there's lots of people, as I said, that talk about God in general terms. 
but he is he sent his son yeah. to die to live a perfect life mm. for and to demonstrate a perfect life for us but also experiencing human weaknesses and leaving behind lessons for us to learn how to live in this world right. but then he died and he rose again and he sits at the right hand of God that's salvation, Romans 10. Mm. We confess with our mouth, we believe with our heart. That's how we know who God is. We know him through our salvation. But then it goes deeper. And this was one of my favorite, perhaps favorite parts of the book, was really getting into the names of God. And I know Wendy Blight yes. has the names of God's book. She, so she does. I know his name. I know his yes. name. And it's a great resource if you want to study that along the way or maybe even after we finish it oh, yeah. potential in the in-between. That's a great book. Um, but I remember thinking names of God when, when I was first starting out in my faith. Mm -hmm. Names of God, what does that mean? And I don't want to go to seminary and I don't plan to go to seminary and I don't want to learn all those big words. And right. I'm just going to call him God, right? <laughs> Let's just I'm just going to be it. general, God. Wrap it up. <laughs> but here's the thing that I want us to get out of chapter one in, in the names of God is that, well, here's an example. Okay, so I'm Wendy Pope. Yes. All right, when I see people and I introduce myself, I introduce myself as Wendy Pope. And people know me as Wendy Pope. But to a few people, I'm different. Mm -hmm. To the people that really know me, I'm mom. So true. Or I'm wife. Or I'm honey. <laughs> and some other nicknames that my husband calls me that I won't share on, I won't share on film. <laughs> to my mom and dad, I'm sweet pea. Mm -hmm. 89 and 86, I'm still their sweet pea. There's a different level of intimacy there. Mm -hmm. And to my friends I was at Proverbs 31, <laughs> what am I? Weepo. I'm Weepo. Um, to differentiate from Wendy Blight and Wendy Pope, I am Weepo from our sweet um, longtime friend. Sheila Mangum gave me that name years ago. But there's an intimacy to knowing God beyond yeah. salvation when you know his name. And I've listed all of those in the book. And they changed, mm. they changed your life. When you start calling on him and believing in him for his name. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I, for example, have had in the last few years some financial struggles, mm -hmm. some unemployment times. And you know what? Right now, I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of people right. who are dealing with the possible loss of a job or have lost a job, yeah. um, lost businesses. God is Jehovah Jireh. He is provider. There's a lot of people who are sick right now as we're filming right. in hospitals with COVID. He is Jehovah Rapha. Mm -hmm. He is our healer. We're in battles. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is our banner. Right. So when you start calling out to God in those names and believing God, that's the second theme of the, the, the chapter is knowing God and believing mm -hmm. God, you can start to believe, hey, he can do anything with me. Because you know more intimately. Absolutely. When you start Absolutely. calling those names like Weepo Absolutely. or Mom, there's just an intimacy Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Yes. I know you're not going to call me Mom. Right. Okay? My right. kids know me different. <laughs> They're going to call me Mom. But there's a different level of intimacy there. Mm -hmm. With that different level of intimacy, we're going to take it one step further. There is a level of belief mm -hmm. and trust. Okay, so let's say I know God can do anything with me. I know he can do anything right. with me. Do I trust him to do anything with me? Right. And that's where we start unpacking those four F's. Can I trust him with my fears? Mm -hmm. Can he do anything with my flawed self? Right. Can he do anything with all those times that I have failed and failed and failed again? Mm -hmm. Right? Can he do anything with me? And he can do anything with me. And just kind of wrapping things up here, what I... Um, want us to enter into this book with besides these two themes of knowing God beyond salvation. That's the first thing and most secure thing that we have to secure the most. Mm -hmm. um, and I include that in every one of my books because it's so important. We have to know Christ yeah. through salvation and God through the salvation of Jesus Christ, his son. Um, so knowing him through salvation, believing him, knowing his names, this is going to come up to this, this question of, can God do anything with me? And the questions that we're going to answer each week is, yeah. but 
I did this. Mm. I was unfaithful to my spouse. Or a long time ago, I took some things yeah. from a company that I worked for. Or, you know what, I had a substance abuse problem. Yeah. Certainly God can't do anything with that. Here's the thing that I want you to hear. God can handle our uncertainties. He can handle our uncertainties. When you know him yeah. and you believe him and you start trusting him with those uncertainties, there isn't anything he can't do. And Moses wrestled with those. As you will read in the next chapter, Moses wrestled with those mm. very questions in chapters 2 and chapter 3, or excuse me, chapter 3 and chapter 4 of Exodus. He talks about, you know, well, what am I going to tell them Right. when they Moses was sent? And, and we'll unpack Moses' story a little bit more later, but he was chosen mm -hmm. to be the rescuer of God's people and the leader of God's people. Um, and he has this argument with God. And I love that argument. It's very human. You can it's relate to it. It's very human. Right? Because we all wrestle with. Right. We don't want to think that we can ask a question of a holy God who's sovereign sitting on the throne, but he can handle our mm -hmm. uncertainties. He can handle our questions. And you know, most certainly, he can do anything with us. Absolutely. That's good, Wendy. And I think you set us up perfectly for Thank what we're going to experience in week one. And you kept saying the word, when you know God, mm -hmm. and then you went into when you believe God. Right. And so that is the heartbeat of Proverbs 31 Ministries. Absolutely. Yes. So we have something that we're going to say at the end of every video. And so I just want to spend some time talking about it really quickly. But the tagline is, when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. everything. And when we talk about truth, we're talking about the Word of God, God's Word, because we know when you open up Scripture, when you open up Wendy's book and you read Scripture that she has pulled out for us, and we just really dive mm -hmm. into what that means, that's us knowing it. And then we go into the belief part, right? When we live it out, when we see Scripture and it's telling us to do something, maybe be more patient, and we're being more patient with hard our kids. Stuff. Yeah, the hard <laughs> stuff, right? When we live it out, when we live right. the truth, it truly 100% changes everything. Mm -hmm. And I think you set us up well in this book and in this study to live that out. Absolutely. So thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. And the theme, of course, of the book is that you are a worthwhile possibility. Yes, yes. And that's what we want you to know each week as you study and you read and it comes up, well, I can't do this or this is impossible. Mm -hmm. I did this, I did that. You are a worthwhile possibility. That's right. All right, everybody. Well, happy week one. Right. We will see you again next week. And remember, when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Bye, everybody. Bye.